Today, you can find glory in sewing your own boxy hoodie. This tutorial is paired with a free sewing pattern of the hoodie, and I also have other sewing patterns on my website. I'll have a link below for access to those. The fit will be pretty boxy, not necessarily oversized, but a little bit of a drop shoulder. And I guess be aware that this hoodie has a few more extra pieces, like a panel down here on the side and an extra panel on the sleeve. But I'm gonna make this tutorial like all my other ones. I'm gonna go through each step in detail, explain everything, so even beginners can do this tutorial. Now before we rush into the tutorial, I know you're ready to fast forward through the intro. Let's take some time to review links and resources that you'll either want or need to do this properly. There are four things I wanna to touch on. One, the pattern. There'll be a free PDF pattern link in the description below. You can Google local print and copy shops close by to your place and hopefully call ahead to make sure that they have a large enough printer to print this because you don't want to scale anything. Alternatively, I have the paper pattern option. So if you don't have access to a printer close by, then I can mail one out to you. And if you're an eager beaver who's dying to sew, sign up to my email newsletter because email subs get early access to my patterns and tutorials. Secondly, DIY kits. For those who might not have access to certain fabric shops, or be able to print out the big pattern paper, you can get all this stuff in one with a DIY kit. The DIY kit comes with everything you need for this project. It comes with the fabric, the pattern, thread, and it comes with the Glory Allen DIY woven tag. So if you want, order the kit, get sent to your house, press play on the tutorial and get started. Thirdly, how to use the pattern. In all my tutorials, I cut out the pattern panel according to my size that I want, but that limits me because that means I can only sew that size because I end up recycling the rest of the paper. If you wanna sew multiple sizes or if you wanna sew more than one piece, it would be helpful to copy the pattern onto tracing paper and then copy the tracing paper onto craft paper. I have a two minute video on that. It's gonna be on my new playlist, Seems Too True, where I drop these very quick two minute videos, tips and tricks of sewing, some good habits, some bad habits. Stay tuned for that. And lastly, this is the 12th video that I've made and it feels like a significant number for me, a bit of a milestone. So I created this shirt to celebrate that. The fit is oversized. It's like dark, dark gray. It almost looks like a vintage washed out black. It's got a soft purple puff print on the back, which is like a raised print. 230 GSM cotton, so it's thick. This is a medium on me. If you want a normal fit, I would just size down one. This is my first Glory Allen ready to wear t-shirt design ever. So I'm pretty excited about this. I hope everyone's as excited as I am about it. Link below as well to cop this. It's an exclusive tee made specifically to commemorate this 12th tutorial. Those are the links that'll help you for this project. So if you have your sewing tools, you have your fabric, you have your pattern, and you have patience, then let's get started. In all my tutorials, I usually cut the pattern out of the paper, but there's actually a proper way to use a sewing pattern, and that's by getting tracing paper and craft paper. Tracing paper is this lightweight see-through paper, which you put on top of the sewing pattern and trace out the size you want, and then you take the tracing paper and put it on craft paper to then get the actual pattern that you'll be using against fabric. This craft paper is very thick. It's almost like cardstock, so it'll stand up to the test of time. When you use it and rub chalk against it, it'll never lose its form. So this process is a lot better. It's more prudent if you wanna be capturing all the different sizes or you plan on using this pattern multiple times. If you're interested in all the steps for that, I have a separate video specifically for how to trace sewing patterns. On the top left of the pattern, we'll show you how much fabric you'll need for this project. And I find sometimes it's difficult to perfectly match the cotton fleece to the rib knit. Luckily, this fabric was donated by Jericho, which is a socially conscious Canadian manufacturer of basic apparel. Check them out if you want at jericho.ca. One thing you want to do is make sure you pre-wash the fabric since fleece is notorious for shrinking. And sometimes the fabric comes in these tube rolls, which means it's not 50 or 60 inches tall, it's actually 30. But it's because the fabric's folded in half and it's like this endless tube, which is perfectly fine. It just gives you a fold to work on with the panels, just something to be aware of. Another thing you'll want to check as we're doing this project is make sure that the lines run vertical on all the pieces. Every time you place a pattern on the fabric to cut, analyze the orientation of the panel and the direction of the weaves. If you want to do all horizontal, you can. Just make sure you're consistent throughout. Now let's talk about some sewing tips. 
I'm using a Singer 4423. It's a heavy duty edition and it's more than capable of handling a project like a hoodie. A walking foot can help you with this project as well because they have an extra set of feed ducts on the top to feed both the top and bottom smoothly. But I'm just gonna use a standard presser foot assuming that everyone else has this as well. If you have the money for a serger or overlocker machine, that'll help keep the raw edges nice and clean. But if you don't have that, then a sewing machine with a zigzag stitch will also do, which is what I'll do for this tutorial. So when I'm dealing with those raw edges, I'm going to change it to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to change the width to 5 and the length down from 3 to 1. This is optional and there's room to adjust if you want to change the zigzag stitch settings to your liking. I would say test it out on a scrap piece of fabric before you start. And make sure you do a fold so that it's sewing two layers, not one. When the needle moves to the right, you're going to want to drop outside of the fabric so that it's going over the edge. The needle is basically going past the edge of the fabric and that way it actually ties in the raw edges completely. If you're happy with that, let's put our machine back to a straight stitch. My length is going to be 3, width 0, and my tension is going to be at 3 as well. If your sewing machine has this, this is the amount of pressure that your pressure foot applies. I would loosen this because the fleece fabric is very big, but it's very soft. So when the pressure foot comes down, it's going to sink into the fabric. And if it sinks too much, it's applying too much pressure. And that means it's going to have problems feeding the fabric through smoothly. Take note of how many turns you adjust the pressure foot so you can bring it back to its normal state when you're done. But you want the press foot to just lightly hold the fabric like this. Lastly, because the fabric is so big, the presser foot could be tilted when you start a stitch. So there's this thing called a stitch starter. Basically, because the fabric is so thick, the press foot would be on an angle when you first try to ingest your fabric. So you wedge a folded piece of fabric underneath the foot to help it get over that first starting hump. I think that's enough talking about tips and tricks how to get set up for this project. So let's actually start, take our pattern paper, and take a look at what we got ahead of us. On the top left, you have the GA code that matches the pattern with the tutorial. You have details on the fit and style of the sweater, and then you have a chart with the fabric required, and below that you have the sizing key. Each panel is numbered in chronological order of what we'll deal with, and it also labels each panel by the name, how many pieces to cut, and the GA code. A friendly little reminder, always use other craft scissors for cutting out your pattern. Never use fabric scissors when cutting paper. Now we'll start by cutting out all the panels, but I usually like to start my project off by cutting out the top left corner because this will have all the details for the pattern and this is something that I want to keep with the panels for future use. Once you're done cutting out all the panels, grab clips and scissors and place the panel pieces on top of your fabric. Make sure to place the panel on the folded fabric where it says, and then pay attention to the orientation of the panel in relation to the weaves or lines of the fabric. I'm going to do vertical lines on my hoodie all the way around. And then grab chalk. We're going to grab a paperweight, put it on top of the panel to hold it still while we use chalk to mark the edges that we will then remove the pattern and cut out. I want to highlight the difference between high quality scissors. I recently upgraded from my hand-me-down scissors that have never been sharpened to a proper pair of fabric scissors and you can actually hear the difference. Just want to show you very quickly, it does make a difference. If you're going to be sewing a lot, I highly recommend upgrading. This is a 10 inch pair that I got for 30 bucks.
Okay, so the first step, we're gonna grab panel number one, which is the kangaroo pocket. We're gonna lay it down flat. We're gonna surge the left and right shorter edges, and it's actually gonna look something like this after we folded it. So change your sewing machine to the zigzag settings and let's surge the edges. Make sure the needle falls over the edge of the fabric to get a nice clean hold. Once the edges have been surged or zigzag stitched, you're gonna fold it. There's a corner which shows where to start and it's gonna be a one inch fold. Take your iron and press it down. Make sure to do it to both left and right edges. Now that both are surged and folded down, we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna do a top stitch to hold those edges down. Switch your sewing machine back to the straight stitch settings and we're gonna sew three quarters of an inch from the edge. Now's a good time to throw that stitch starter in there to give it a try. We're gonna do one on the left side that's folded and one on the right side that's folded. We now have the left and right side top stitched. So with the three remaining sides, we'll do a zigzag or surge the ends and we'll leave that long bottom side. If you have a serger machine or overlocker, you're lucky, just whip this thing underneath. But if you're gonna be using a sewing machine like me, switch it to a zigzag stitch and zigzag stitch the edges. With those three new edges surged or zigzag stitched, Fold all three edges by 3 eighths of an inch and iron it down. Now grab the front body panel, which is panel number two, place it on flat surface. We're gonna grab the sewing pattern for this panel as well and place it on top to match the corners. I would highly recommend getting clips and clipping the sewing pattern to the fabric and make sure you match up the corners so that it's properly aligned. We're gonna sandwich it with the kangaroo pocket on top and we're gonna line up the left side corners of the kangaroo pocket to the pattern paper. The pattern paper has an outline made for the kangaroo pocket so that you can match the edges, but you can also center it by the center fold of the pocket with the center fold of the front panel. This is how we're gonna center the placement for the kangaroo pocket. We're gonna clip or pin down the right side of the pocket to hold it in place. Then we'll remove the sewing pattern and then clip or pin the left side of the kangaroo pocket. Now we have the kangaroo pocket centered on our hoodie. I haven't really seen this method for placing panels on from patterns, but it works for me and I think it's an easy way for people to learn. So this is why I do it. So now we're gonna edge stitch three stitches on this kangaroo pocket. When I do an edge stitch, which is basically stitching as close to the edge as possible, I like to throw on a zipper foot because I could see better. With the zipper foot on, I match the right edge of the press foot to the edge of the fabric that I wanna sew on to get a really, really close stitch. It's kinda of like a personal habit of mine. You could do this or you could do a quarter inch stitch. And when you're done those three edges, do a fourth stitch at the bottom edge of the pocket to match it with the hem. Just makes it a little bit easier when we're sewing a waistband on. Just make sure it's less than three eighths of an inch. So I'd probably do a quarter inch stitch at the very, very bottom. Now to add a little bit more detail to this, you can do a second stitch, which I usually do a quarter inch from my previous stitch to make it look like a twin or double needle top stitch. I guess another habit of mine is when I want to do a quarter inch stitch, I move my needle over to the right one and then I match the right edge of my press foot to the edge of that last stitch to give me a quarter inch from that stitch. It doesn't really do anything too, too much. It might hide the edge of the folded fabric a little bit, but for me, it's more of an aesthetic thing on the outside. So now we got the kangaroo pocket. It's laid down, it works. We didn't sew down the pocket, so it still works. And we're gonna do a four stitch at the bottom just to attach the kangaroo pocket to the front panel makes it a little bit easier when we sew the waistband. But the kangaroo pocket's done. Congrats, y'all. Now we're gonna work on the front, side, and back panels. With the right sides together, start at the shoulders and clip them together. We're gonna stitch it at 3 eighths of a seam allowance and then surge or zigzag stitch the edges. If you move the needle position to do that second top stitch like I did, make sure to center it back to the middle. After the shoulders are attached, we're gonna pull the front panel down to match the bottom edge with the bottom edge of the back panel, and we're gonna clip it together. Also make sure that it's centered. Then we're gonna start on one side to attach the side panel. Make sure right sides are together and flip the front panel up just slightly enough to be able to see the edge. With that, you're gonna clip the side panel onto it. Again, making sure right sides are together. Once that clip is complete, pull the edge over more so that you can properly attach the side panel to the back panel. We now have the side panels attached to the front and back panels, so we're gonna throw this under a sewing machine. We're gonna do a straight stitch from the bottom up, and then after each straight stitch, we're gonna do a zigzag stitch to hide the edges. Now we're gonna iron down the seam allowance and top stitch it together. 
but it's important to note the difference between which side you iron the seam allowance down to. If I iron it towards the kangaroo pocket, that's going to elevate the front panel more than the side panel. If I press it to the side panel, then it's going to elevate the side panel more than the front panel. For this case, for the boxy hoodie, I want to have the seam allowance pressed towards the kangaroo pocket so that the front panel is elevated more. Let's switch our sewing machine back to a straight stitch. Let's iron the seam allowance towards the kangaroo pocket and then we'll do a quarter inch stitch from the edge of the connecting seam of the front panel and the side panel. We'll do the same thing for the back side where we'll push the seam allowance towards the back panel instead of the side panel and we'll iron that down and do a top stitch a quarter inch stitch from the connecting seam. We're doing good so far. I would say we're probably 40% there ish. A uh, little bit more to go and it's pretty simple. Up next is a sleeve, which is relatively easy. Nothing new here. Start with panel number five, right sides facing upwards. And we're gonna put panel number six on top, right sides together, and then use those fancy colorful clips, clip the edges together, or use pins if you're feeling bold and safe. And then it's a similar concept to before, where once one edge is clipped, Take panel number six and drag it over to the other side of panel number five. Grab those cute magical clips and clip it together. If you move the needle over to get that quarter inch stitch with a standard presser foot, the same goodish bad habit that I do, then just make sure to switch the needle back to the middle before we sew that connecting straight stitch. Do a 3 8 of a seam allowance stitch all the way across on both edges and then when you're done that do a zigzag stitch to cover up the raw edges or use a serger if you have the serger. Now we're going to work on the cuffs and the waistband. We're going to be using this rib knit material. You can customize the length of this rib knit material. If you want a tighter feel then cut some of the length. If you want a looser feel then add some. This is just a general parameter. You could change it, adjust it. This is a garment that's made for you by you, so you should customize it how you like. Once you have the desired length for the cuff that you want, we're gonna clip the edges together, and then we're gonna do a straight stitch all the way across, same as before, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. Once you sew the cuffs together, instead of doing a zigzag stitch, we're actually gonna press the seams open. Don't zigzag or surge this. Press the seams open, and the next step might be a bit tricky, but Fold it within itself. Try to match seams to seams. I think ideally in most situations, whenever you're folding or connecting pieces, you always want to try to match seams to seams as just like a general rule. Pinch it together, use a clip to hold it together, and then go through the rest of it, folding it within itself and clipping it in place. This takes some fiddling around a little bit, but once you get about half of it going, the rest of it will kind of fall in place. Now we're gonna bring the sleeve back. The smaller end's gonna be where your wrist is, where the cuff will be. You're gonna put the cuff over the sleeve. So it's almost like the cuff is eating the sleeve with the folded edge up the arm. You're gonna to wanna to match seams to seams. We're gonna use clips to attach the cuff to the arm. And then we're gonna sew a 3 8 seam allowance to sew it together. You'll probably notice that the cuff is tighter than the sleeve hole. And this is because you want that tight cinched pull otherwise the ribbon that's not really doing its job and it doesn't hold to your wrist it'll take a bit of maneuvering but ideally you want to pull the cuff to match the sleeve opening and then use your other fingers to attach clips throughout the cuff now you might think let's use a free arm for this for the cuff because it makes sense but sometimes the free arm is so big that when you put the cuff over it it's too stretched out and when it's too stretched out that means the feed dog can't pull the fabric smoothly and you won't get a good stitch so for this, I would probably suggest against the free arm and just put the cuff underneath with the top, just pull it back a bit so that you can get the bottom part of the cuff and not have the top half interfere with it. Now this is pretty typical when you're sewing with elastics or anything with stretch. You wanna match the stretch of both fabrics. So in this case, the cuff is tighter than the sleeve arm. So you wanna stretch the cuff so that it matches the same circumference as the sleeve arm. When the sewing machine's going and the feed dogs are pulling, use your hands to let the fabric get pulled, but at the same time, keep a stretch so that the cuff stretch matches the circumference of the sleeve arm. 
finish that 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then when you're done grab the other cuff start by matching the seams and then pull the cuff so that it matches the same circumference as the sleeve clip it together at that point and then put it under the sewing machine and at that same stretch where the cuff matches the sleeve length do a 3 8 of a seam allowance to sew all the way around to attach them together Similar to how we had to be conscious about how we're going to fold the seam allowance to then top stitch on the body, we're going to do that for this cuff. We want to fold the seam allowance so it goes up the sleeve, which means it's kind of elevating the sleeve more than it is the cuff. And then we're going to do a top stitch quarter inch all the way around to keep the seam allowance in place. If your iron isn't as strong as mine, the seam allowance probably didn't set in place. So as you're sewing, be aware of that and open up the sleeve to push the seam allowance to the left or up the sleeve as you're sewing. Same concept as before, when you're dealing with stretch fabrics, you're gonna stretch the cuff to match the circumference of the sleeve arm so the fabric is flat and you're gonna keep that stretch as the feed dog is moving the fabric. Now, if you made it this far, we're now gonna attach the sleeve to the body, which is a pretty exciting part because the sweater is really gonna come together when you see these attached. But near the end of this stitch, I ran out of thread in my bobbin. So if you're like me and you started with a full bobbin at the beginning of this tutorial, then stop, do a bobbin check so that you don't run out of thread mid-stitch. Because everyone knows that's the worst feeling. It happened to me. I don't want that to happen to you. So just check it real quick. Now to attach the sleeves to the body, the body's going to be inside out, but the sleeve is not. The body's going to have wrong sides out. The sleeve's going to have right sides out. And you're going to insert that sleeve and match the seams. Always when we're attaching pieces, if there's a seam somewhere, match it or put it to the back, put it somewhere less noticeable. General theme to keep in mind. Once you match up the seams, you're gonna take those colorful clips and you're gonna clip the armhole to the body all the way around. Once you're done, it's pretty standard. Our 3 8 seam allowance stitch all the way around. If you move the needle over to the right to do a top stitch, move it back to the middle for this connecting seam. This time I'm going to use a free arm because the circumference is big enough to fit around the free arm. And then once you're done that, do a zigzag stitch or serge the raw edges. It's also a good idea before you just jump into serging the raw edges or zigzag stitching to do a fit check before you finalize that piece because it's a lot easier to seam rip one stitch versus trying to seam rip a stitch plus a zigzag or serged edge. But if everything looks good and it fits well, no adjustments needed, switch it from a straight stitch to a zigzag stitch and serge or zigzag stitch the edges. Now that the sleeves are attached, I mean after every stitch you should probably inspect, but because we matched up the seams, this is a nice flow through, everything looks smooth. Check the back side, the seam also matches, nice and smooth. So we're doing good. The Sleeves are attached, they have cuffs, the body's put together. Let's work on the waistband next. With the waistband, the same with the cuff, you can decide how tight or cinched you want it to be or if you want a looser feel. And one way you can maybe cater this more to yourself is if you take a sweater or hoodie that you already have, measure that waistband when it's relaxed and match that same size to the measurement of the waistband that you're creating. As we've done it before, match the edges, turn it from a zigzag to a straight stitch, do 3 eighths of a seam allowance down, Press the seams apart, match at the seams, fold it within itself, and clip it together. If you remember from the cuff, we would stretch the cuff so that it matches the circumference of the sleeve to be able to clip it together. But because we're working with such a big piece, you're not going to be able to do that. What I would do is mark four quadrants on the waistband and then match those to four quadrants of the hoodie. Air quotes, eat the hoodie with the waistband with the folded side on the top and match up the quadrants. Intentionally place the seam of the waistband somewhere inconspicuous. Use the center fold line of the hoodie as your center quadrant and match it all up. That way, instead of trying to stretch the whole waistband to match the whole body, you're just working quarter by quarter and you'll be able to squeeze those clips in. The reason you want it to be clipped in equally is that if you don't stretch the waistband to the body, then you'll distort the waistband and attach it unevenly and then you might get a skewed waistband. Sewing with elastic and waistbands, it's pretty similar across the board. It's very similar to the waistband that we did on the mesh shorts that I did in my previous tutorial. You want to stretch the fabric so it's taut. You don't want to overly stretch it. 
Just stretch it enough that it's smooth and flush. As the feed dogs pull the fabric through, you want to let your hands move with the feed dog so it's pulling the fabric, but you're also keeping it taut. You only want to let go of the fabric and remove a clip when the sewing needle's down so you don't lose your stitch and your hands move with the fabric as it pulls. A helpful tip is to slightly pull downwards to play off the corner of the free arm. This helps keep the edges aligned for me because I'm constantly trying to match up the edges but if there's a little bit of force there, it helps smush the fabric together so that it doesn't move around as you're sewing and moving your arms. Sew it at 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. If it looks good, zigzag stitch or serge the raw edges. Then press that seam allowance upwards towards the top of the hoodie. And if you're me looking for an easy way to do a quarter inch top stitch, move that needle to the right one, do a quarter inch top stitch. As the feed dogs are pulling the fabric in, it helps to have your hands on the left and right side and slightly separate the seam to just get it a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit tricky because as you're pulling the fabric apart to stretch the seam, you're also letting your hands follow the fabric as it gets pulled by the feed dogs. You're not pulling the fabric and resisting. It's a bit challenging, but it does make the top stitch a bit cleaner. And the waistband's done. Making these sewing tutorials is a lot of fun, but it does take a lot of energy and time to plan, to produce, to film, to edit, to make it all happen. So it'd really help me out if you could support my channel by subscribing. Likes, subs, comments, any kind of engagement definitely helps the performance of my channel. If you want me to do more DIYs and sewing tutorials, then hit that sub button and let me know. And finally, the last piece is the hood. And you have a couple options here. This tutorial is going to go through a double lined hood, but you could do a one lined hood, which would have the soft part on the inside. It's one layer, so you would serge and zigzag stitch the edge, fold it in at one inch, and then sew it down. But I'm going to show you how you could do a double lined hood. It's a little bit bulkier, but at least I could show you this, and then you could choose between the two after. You want to start by cutting four panels out, clip them together with right sides facing each other, and you're going to sew just the outside curve. Press open the seams and then place them inside of each other, right sides together. This means one's gonna have right sides out, the other one's gonna have wrong sides out, and you're gonna put the right side out inside the wrong side out. I'll just talk about the right sides on the outside and the wrong sides on the outside. It's probably a lot easier if I just don't say anything and you watch the video and see how it's done. Now grab panel number nine, which is our last panel, it's the hood, and use it as a guide to show you which edge to draw the one inch line on. It's gonna be the edge that's front facing. So use your chalk, draw a one inch line, use your clips to clip the hoods together, and then you're gonna sew the hoods together at that one inch line, all the way around. Quick recap, we have our hood, it's clipped together equally, and we have a one inch line that goes all around the front on both sides of the hood and that's where we're going to sew along. Bring your hood over to the iron and then press it open at that one inch seam. So now we have our hood almost built. We flip the right sides outwards so that it's normal and then we're going to do a one inch top stitch but try to use your hands to pinch out the seam so it's even and pulled out to the max. You can pinch them out and use the clips to help hold them or do as I and pinch it out as you sew through stitch by stitch. Like always, never miss an opportunity to try on your piece as you're making it and look a little silly. Okay, so the hood's looking nice. We got our one inch stitch that's holding it together real tight. Let's grab our clips and let's clip the bottom so it's holding the bottom edge of both panels and that's to make sure that they're straight when we attach the hood to the body like usual if there's a seam which there are on both of these panels start at the seams and then work your way out now we attach to the body we're going to use chalk to mark the middle of the back panel. 
Luckily, there's still a fold line there, so I'm just going to mark it with chalk. Bring the hoodie up to it, and then match the middle hoodie seam to the middle of the back panel. Once you have that clipped, work your way outwards to attach the rest of the hood to the body. I know y'all are probably getting excited here, so let's do this quick. We'll do a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance straight stitch to connect the hood to the body. If the fit looks right, you try it on, it looks good, then we're going to switch to a zigzag stitch or serge the raw edges to clean it up. And then I'm going to do a top stitch to complete the look with the seam allowance closer to the body of the hoodie, facing downwards, not towards the hood. And then also, because we're dealing with fleece, this stuff goes everywhere. So hopefully your sewing machine comes with a little brush. It's made to get in deep, deep, deep crevices of your sewing machine. So take out the bobbin and use this to catch some of the dust. This is some of the debris that was left in my machine after this one hoodie. So make sure you clean your machine. And that's how you sew a hoodie. If you're looking for the free PDF pattern, the DIY kit, the celebratory shirt, or even the tools I use, all the links are below. Until next time, peace.